Welcome back to Prompt Circle where we discuss use cases for AI. In today's video, we'll be looking at a fascinating use case. We'll look at how to chat with a database using GPT. As usual, we're going to be using Slack as an interface. So let's take a look at how this actually works. All right. So what we're going to be doing right now is that we're going to be using um, our chatbot here to chat directly with our database. Now, the database we're using here is uh, called Chinook. It's just basically a mock database that contains information about uh, different things. So there are a number of tables in there. So the tables that contain names of artists, uh, tracks, albums, um, and also names of employees. So let's try something that is more um, an aggregation. So let's say we said um, how many artists have names that start with the letter O. Okay, so it says 11 artists have names that start with the letter O. Okay. So you can see actually, as we kind of go through this, uh, we can see a number of uh, responses. Um, so we have, you know, how many artists uh, start with the name A and it says 26 artists and we say name five artists and we went ahead and named them. Um, and we said, you know, which employees have uh, a name starting with A and it, it did mention um, Andrew Adams and you can see that there are you know number of different queries you know and you can see the queries that return zero employees um, as well as in, in the scenario where we say you know how many artists um, have names that start with the letter O and you can see 11 artists have you know names that start with the letter O so you could essentially just simply query your database just simply in simple English I think this is really powerful when you really think about um, the possibilities here. Um, you could build like simple internal tools that uh, people who may not be familiar with SQL or querying languages can interact with. So everyone can actually interact with your database and get a sense of what's going on. So what is GPT doing behind the scenes? Well, GPT is taking um, the information that you've provided, it's converting it into a query, and then it's returning a response back, which is really neat. And so far, from what I've seen, mostly the um, results are really accurate. So let's actually jump in and see exactly how to build this out. All right, so let's look at our to-do list here. So first, we need to install SQLite and the Chinook database. I will provide a link to a step-by-step -step guide for this. Next, we need to initialize Slack and the message handler function. And then finally, we need to write a SQL chain function. This is a line chain feature that provides the abstraction that we need uh, to connect a large language model, in this case, OpenAI's GPT, to a SQL database. So we'll be writing that function to ensure that we're able to uh, make that connection. All right, so before you get started, be sure to install SQLite as well as the Chinook database for SQLite as well. I've provided these two links, which would guide you through the process of doing that. I'm also going to add these links uh, to the description in the video. All right, so let's get our environment set up. Um, in the terminal, um, go ahead and make a new directory. I'm calling mine so, um, Slack SQL bot. Um, you can CD into that directory. Um, then you want to activate a virtual environment. Um, I'm sure you already have your Slack bot token, your Slack app token, and your open AI uh, API key. So be sure to export them um, or store them as environment variables as you will be using them um, in the app. All right, so what libraries are we gonna be using? We're gonna use Langchain. As you all know, Langchain is a very sophisticated library uh, for working with large language models and working with multiple different um, external sources and combining them. So that's one of the things we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using OpenAI because our large language model is OpenAI, as well as a Slack Bolt framework, which is for our Slack app itself. All right, so let's step through the code. Now, so you can see that I have a few things inside my uh, folder here. I have a bud.py file, which is where our code actually resides in. Um, I also have a Chinook DB file here um, as well. So be sure to have this 
um, before um, writing the application because that's is where uh, we're going to be looking up um, the data. So um, I'm going to also make the GitHub repository available to you so you can always use that um, instead. So let's step through um, some of the things that's going on here. So first and foremost, we want to import our libraries and the, the necessary modules. So OS obviously to allow us to interact with our environment variables and the app from Slack Bolt, uh, which allows us to create our message handlers and our event listeners, as well as socket mode, which allows us to operate in, um, in socket mode um, for our Slack app. From Langchain, we're importing three main modules. One, OpenAI, which really simply gives us access to the OpenAI large language model, GPT. Um, SQL database, which basically is a wrapper around SQL Alchemy. Um, SQL Alchemy is an ORM, so that's an object relational mapper, which gives, um, you know, which essentially allows you to write um, um, SQL commands or SQL queries, sorry, uh, in Python code, because essentially what's going to be happening is that when we issue um, a request, um, the large language model is going to translate that request into Python code that allows us to interact with the database. So this wrapper is essentially what it's going to be using to do that. Um, we also have the SQL um, database chain. Um, this chain is what's responsible for um, converting um, the information into um, a SQL um, uh, query and um, interacting with the SQL database directly and returning the response that we need. So you're going to see exactly how this works. So first and foremost, we want to connect to our database. So in this case, we're connecting our SQL database um, Alchemy, our ORM um, wrapper. We're connecting it to our Chinook database, which is in the roots of our, our, of our folder here. Um, we're initializing OpenAI, so and setting the temperature to zero. Uh, we always do this just to make sure that it reduces hallucination. Um, and then we are creating a database chain. So using our SQL database chain, uh, we're using the large language model. We're using the uh, from LLM um, um, function here. Uh, or method, sorry, which contains uh, the large language model, the base language, language model we're using, in this case, OpenAI, the database, which is the SQL database that we, we're using, as well as whatever prompt is coming coming across as well. We're setting, um, so in this, in this method, we're gonna pass the large language model here. We're gonna pass the database, which we initialized earlier on. Uh, we're going to also kind of set verbose to true. This allows us to see, um, you know, the steps that um, the, the the large language model is going through in trying to resolve problems, which we'll see very very shortly when we run our queries. And then top underscore k equals to three means that we're just simply just adding um, a limit in the number of records we want it to return uh, when it makes queries. So this is just so that. Um, you know, it doesn't return way too much and fills up um, your token count. So this is just kind of having some control around that. So the first thing we want to do here is initialize the Slack app with our bug token here. So this allows us to actually listen for messages. So in our message handler here, uh, we're listening for any message that is coming through, any direct message to our bot. And then we're responding to that message uh, once, it, once it comes in. Um, so we take the message, we pass that message into our, our database chain um, dot run, uh, which basically will take that message and pass it into our chain um, as a query. Um, that query will run and then return a response. Uh, we're storing that response inside result. And then once we get that result back, we want to res respond, um, you know, with our say function here. So we're just passing result uh, in there with our say function. Um, again, we're just sort of initializing our Slack app here by um, kicking off this, the socket mode handler and starting it off so that we can now listen uh, for events. So let's go ahead and test this out and see exactly how uh, it's going to perform. So I'm going to go ahead and do Python 3 bot 
dot py and get it started and i'm just going to increase this a little bit because i want to show you exactly uh, what it looks like uh, when a message uh, comes uh, when a message comes in so let's simply throw a query here so let's say name all the artists whose names start with the letter o so let's let's try that one so name all the artists whose uh, names start with the letter o so when we do this and go into our app you would notice that the the large language model converts that query into um, the large language model translates what we've said into a query so you see select name from artists where name like um, O and then the limit is set to 3 because uh, what I said earlier on about having the top underscore K set to 3 so that's why it's passing that limit if I remove that limit then it's going to um, you know kind of uh, it wouldn't have any limits set up um, and as you can see our result here is coming back uh, with the three um, artists names that start with O and once that result is come back it's passing that answer and it finishes the chain and now it gives us the actual result when we check inside um, inside slack so that's essentially what's happening here um, it's just generating queries once a, a message comes in and is, is using those queries to run those queries using uh, SQL Alchemy and then returning a response which is passed back to us um, as a response in Slack as you have seen. So this is really exciting because you can think about this to for, for various um, purposes. I think about it very immediately uh, for internal tools that you might want to build on top of your database or if you want to just give um, you know more people the ability to query and to understand the data that you have uh, even if they don't have you know the database administrator skill set or they don't understand SQL as a language they'll be able to actually interact with the database uh, comfortably so I found it to be very useful I am using it currently at work as well to interact with our own internal databases so I, I found it to be quite useful and I think um, it's, it's something that you might want to try out. All right, thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it was useful. Um, looking forward to seeing what you guys build. Thanks and have a great one. Bye.